Do you own a home? Have you outgrown it maybe? Have you thought about whether to move or renovate or do an addition? Well, here to chat with me about that is Amy Shepard from Sensible Money. Amy, welcome. Thanks, Bob. So let's start here. Uh, what's a common topic on people's minds as they spend more time at home due to the coronavirus pandemic? I am finding that a lot of people are looking for more space. So we are doing a lot of things at home. People are working from home. They have kids at home doing online school. And then, of course, we all live at home, too. So a lot of people are trying or wanting to find a new home that fits this transitional lifestyle that we're all going through right now. Right. So what are uh, some tips to help people decide whether they should uh, move or renovate? Yeah, so I uh, am a big fan of something I call values-based planning. And so what that really just means is before thinking about all the numbers is think about what's important to you. And so one of the first steps, I think, is making a list of pros and cons. Um, it, it really forces people to take the time to sit down and attempt to take the emotion out of it and, and be more critical thinking about, you know, what do I love about my current house? What do I want to change? Um, it also just gives you an opportunity to look at that list and see which one is longer than the other. You know, sometimes when you sit down and write it on paper, you find that the the pros list is actually longer, longer than you thought. And so it just is a helpful jumping off point to just really think about what, what it is you want. Right. And have you found any common themes in terms of what people want? I know in my case, when we decided to do a, an addition on our house, it was the fact that we couldn't replace our neighbors in a new neighborhood. And uh, we didn't know what kind of neighbors we would get if we moved. So we thought staying put and renovating was the, the best option for us. Yeah, I think a lot of people when they go through that exercise of pros and cons, they do realize that uh, there are the the things that not so specific to your house, you know, like your neighbors or the how close you are to the grocery store or family or the school district you're in. You know, a lot of people with kids don't want to uproot their kids and move to a different school district. So there's so many more considerations other than that initial, we need more room. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling of bursting at the seams. So what are some ways that people can fund these projects? Uh, that's a great question too. And so I think most people are aware that mortgage rates right now are pretty close to historic lows. So no matter if you decide to move and take on a new mortgage or, you know, borrow money to finance a renovation project, there's a really good chance that you can do it at an affordable rate. So, um, you know, moving, one of the things I typically recommend for people is a 30 year mortgage. Of course, you know, with most financial related things, it's not a one size fit, fits all, but generally speaking, a 30 30-year fixed mortgage at current rates is a really great option for a new purchase because it locks you in at a low rate and it just gives you freedom as you progress in life that, you know, life happens, things change, you know, you have that stability for 30 years. Um, so that's a great way to fund a, a new purchase. But um, one of the other things to keep in mind is even though rates are really low, housing prices have gone up quite a bit, um, you know, when you look five years ago, even one year ago, um, most parts of the country prices have increased a lot. So even though you might lock in a really great rate, uh, I think a lot of people are experiencing some sticker shock when they go out there and look at upgrading and see how much it costs right now um, in terms of home prices. Uh, when it comes to renovations, there are you know, quite a bit of options. Now, one of the first things that I always think of as a financial planner is cash. You know, it's always good to save for the things that you want to accomplish. If you have the cash, that's great. Um, you want to make sure you don't deplete your entire savings to fund a renovation project just because there's always surprises. Life happens. Um, some people don't have the cash they need to do it, especially big projects. So some other options are doing like a home equity line of credit where you use um, kind of like a, a revolving credit line against the equity in your home. You don't get a lump sum of cash, but you get this line of credit that you can slowly access as you, you know, add the roof or take out kitchen cabinets or whatever it might be you're doing. Um, with HELOCs, you usually have a slightly higher interest rate than you would on a traditional mortgage. So that's something to think about. And um, HELOCs typically have uh, variable interest rates too. So you, you kind of give up, you, you have a little more flexibility, but you give up that locking in that low rate that we're seeing right now. 
And then one thing I think uh, is is more common uh, is to do something called a cash out refinance, where you can access the equity in your home and you basically replace your current mortgage with a new mortgage at a higher uh, amount because you're taking the cash out in a lump sum and then you can use that to fund um, whatever projects you want to be working on. Right. And um, on the HELOC, it's worth noting too that some of, in some cases, there are balloon payments at the end of a 10 year period too, if they go that route. Yep. That's a great point too. So you, again, yeah, you don't, you're not locking in that, uh, you know, the, the budget side of things. Right. So uh, are, there, are there any other financial considerations that people need to think about, consider? Yep. So uh, one of the important ones is just your financial goals in general, both short term and long term and your budget. Um, You know, first and foremost, you want to do what's important to you and what's going to make life happier and better for you. But you also want to make sure that you look at your monthly budget and that you don't buy a new house that's going to stretch you too thin or take on a renovation that's going to cost so much that's going to be added financial stress. Um, You also want to think about what's on the horizon, you know, for your life goals. Have you been thinking about taking a big vacation or buying a new car or maybe purchasing a vacation home somewhere? You know, when you when you add on a big home renovation project or a potential move, it may cause you to have to postpone some of those other things. So that's really important. Um, One of the other things that's important to specifically with deciding to renovate is the cost compared to the return on investment. So a really great example for that is, you know, say you meet with some contractors and they tell you right now the average cost of construction is $300 a square foot, um, which is high. Uh, Cost of construction construction has gone up quite a bit recently. Um, But then you talk to a real estate agent or you look at your home value that says, you know, maybe on average homes in your neighborhood are going for 150 a square foot. You have to evaluate that cost benefit analysis and and help determine, you know, hey, if we put all this money into our house, are we going to get most of it back or are we over improving for the neighborhood? So that's another important thing to look at too. All right. So, um, Amy, th- this has been a really great discussion about whether you should, uh, what, love it or list it. So, yeah. <laughs> so really want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this topic. Uh, greatly yep. appreciate it. Happy to help. Thanks so much, Bob.